Kelly hit back hard against the Mother Jones piece challenging his war reporting. MSNBC contributor David Korn writing in the Liberal magazine that the Fox News host had suggested he was in the Falkland Islands covering the 1982 war between Britain and Argentina. Basically, David Korn, a liar, says I exaggerated situations in the Falklands War and the Salvadoran War. O'Reilly says he's always made clear that as a CBS correspondent, he covered a violent protest in Argentina in the war's aftermath. I was there in the street with my camera crews. The violence was horrific as Argentine soldiers fired into the crowd who were responding with violent acts of their own. My video of the combat led the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather that evening. I never said I was on the Falkland Islands, as Corn purports. I said I covered the Falklands War, which I did. David Corn responded to the Huffington Post. Bill O'Reilly, in the aftermath of the article going up yesterday, just gets out there and calls me a liar and says that you know, he didn't say what he said. Yeah. And he's, you know, and he's you know, accusing me of peddling garbage and swill and not really responding to the issues. And joining me now by phone is the aforementioned Bill O'Reilly. Bill, let's start with the latest developments. Uh, former CBS correspondent Eric Engberg, who was in Argentina at the time, taking you on in a Facebook posting. He starts by calling you a bloviator. I hope that didn't hurt your feelings. And he <laughs> says, though, that O'Reilly has been correct in describing the situation in Buenos Aires as somewhat dicey for reporters. We'll get into the details in a moment, but then he goes on to say this was a pretty tame riot. Your reaction? It's absurd. I mean, it might have been tame for him because I don't know if he was there. I don't. I I, I asked him to come on the program, the Factor, tomorrow night. He turned us down. But he is running he over he to CNN. There. He's running over to CNN, but he can't come on to my program. See, I don't know. Eric Engberg was there, and by the way, all the CBS correspondents that were there, five, were sent to cover the Falklands War. That's what we were told. You're going to Argentina to cover the Falklands War, okay? So that everybody should know that was a description of what our job was to be. All right, so Eric Engberg, he he's calling the uh, riot that happened after the Argentines surrendered to the British a quote relatively tame riot. All right, this is the article written by Richard Meislin on June fifteenth, nineteen eighty two, and I'm quoting: Policemen firing tear gas tonight dispersed thousands of angry Argentines who had mass in front of the presidential palace to condemn the government surrendering to the British on the Falkland Islands. As the crowd chanted increasingly bitter invective at the government before the speech, reflecting sorrow, anger, and disbelief of the public here over the loss, police in riot gear moved in, firing tear gas canisters and roaring through the Plaza de Mayo on motorcycles. Hundreds fled to the side street, shouting obscenities as the police fired acrid gas. Others ripped down wooden street signs, set them afire in the plaza. Fires appeared in several nearby intersections as demonstrators threw waste baskets into them, then set them ablaze to slow the police. One large gray van pulled into an intersection, a block for the plaza. Policemen emerged, seizing anyone they could. One policeman pulled a pistol, firing five shots. The leaders of the uh, ten political parties in a statement tonight denounced the police as brutal repressors and a flagrant violation of the public faith. Several demonstrators reported they've been injured, along with two reporters at least. Local right, news yeah. agencies said three buses had been set ablaze by demonstrators, another one fired upon. The demonstration of national outrage was a type seldom seen since the military took power in 1976. That's right, so the, that was New the New York, York Times. Times. Right, exactly. But now Engberg says he's suspicious that there was actually gunfire. You obviously wait, say wait, there was wait, gunfire. Wait, 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 okay. wait, wait. He's suspicious of the New York Times then. Okay, not me. He suspicious of the New York Times. They Engberg reported also. that. Now, you have said in describing this, uh, this episode in yes. Buenos Aires that your photographer was run down, hit in the head, he was bleeding, the army was chasing you guys. Engberg right. says, oh, I never heard of any injury to the photographer. Well, because he, I don't think he was there. I, I don't think he knows what happened. And I'll tell you why. I left the hotel. Engberg was still in the hotel, the Sheridan. I came back, running back with video for the Rather broadcast that night. Engberg was in the hotel. So if he were in the Plaza de Mayo, okay, where was the video? Why did I have to run it up to the feed point and send it to New York? So I don't know if he was even there. And I'd like, right, but... I'd like everybody to ask him, were you there? Okay. Because his reputation, now... his nickname was Room Service Eric. But he never left the hotel. 
One more point uh, from the Engberg Facebook posting. He says that you violated the Bureau Chief's orders by having your cameraman turn on the lights to shoot some footage. That footage, of course, later used by CBS News. Totally absurd. I was there in the daytime. No order was given to me about anything. We turned on a light one time so I could do a stand-up with people falling all over around me on a side street. It lasted for about 30 seconds. I didn't know of any order or anything like that. I was working. Okay, I was working this whole situation. I mean, it's, this is such a smear, it is unbelievable. Do I went to believe? Montevideo uh, on 6-13, June 13th, Montevideo, Uruguay, okay? And I covered the uh, casualties coming back from the HMS Herald, which was destroyed by the Argentine Air Force. I didn't see Eric Engberg there. Okay? So do you believe that this criticism from your former CBS colleague is personal? Yeah, because in 1998, I, I laced them for Bigfooting. Why don't you tell what your, the audience what Bigfooting is, Howard? All right, Bigfooting is when a journalist such as yourself, you were not then the Bill O'Reilly of Fox News, is covering a story, and another better-known journalist comes in and basically does either writes the article, does the stand-up, I guess in your case, and you complained about this in a book, uh, Bob Schieffer came in and, and, and you left CBS afterwards, so you, I guess right. you felt Bigfoot. So yes. this, this, was a, this has been in place since 1998. Now, you're a newspaper reporter formally, correct? Correct. If, some, if you write an article and, and send it in and another reporter puts their name on the article, what's that called? It begins with a P. <laughs> I've always called it Bigfooting, and you're not happy if that what, happens. What is it called in, in print? It begins I'll with the, a P. I'll let you tell me. Plagiarism. Oh, but if it's your colleague and you're working together. It, no, well, I wasn't working together with, with these guys. Yeah. Okay. I filed me, these. I got the video. Well, my crews are magnificent, by the way. And Roberto Moreno got hurt. Okay? And, and we tended to B Roberto, but he was a tough guy. And, you know, I, I left him to run the video back to the Bureau. And then I went back. And subsequently, he was okay. But he got knocked down. All right? Okay. And, he, and to, I, we had to, to get him out so that he didn't get any more damage. But he, they did a fabulous to... job. These this is this is such a smear, and it's a coordinated smear. Do you know that Eric Engberg was written about by Bernie Goldberg in his book Bias as one of the yes. worst worst correspondents on CBS News? And Bernie goes into how he smeared Steve Forbes. Did you know that? I've read the book. I know there's some animosity there. I know Bernie Goldberg obviously is part of your program. So again, part of my saying... program. He was working at well, CBS then. No, of course. Howard? I'm saying that he is now a Fox News contributor. Look, yeah, it doesn't matter. He wrote get... that book far, far before he was on Fox. Bernie did. I, I understand. After when he left CBS, let me get you to the bottom line here because it seems to me, in my analysis of this, that the Mother Jones piece ultimately, if you boil it down, comes down to this semantic question. You have said you covered a combat situation in Argentina during the Falklands War. You've said the war zones of the Falkland conflict in Argentina. Looking back, do you think wish you had worded it differently? No. When you have soldiers and, and military police firing into the crowd, as the New York Times report, and you have people injured and hurt, and you're in the middle of that, that's the definition. All right? This is splitting hairs, trying anything they can to bring down me because of the Brian Williams situation. That's exactly what it is. This liar, Corn wrote in his original piece that I hammered Brian Williams. Is that true, Howard? No, I know for a fact that's not true because I was on the factory okay. with you the first right. night so of you the Brian Williams story, and you stayed away from criticizing true. him. Yeah, right. you know for a fact it isn't true, and everybody who saw me on Kimmel or on Fox News knows it isn't true. So why does David Corn have any credibility at all? Why? You're saying that no, this was No, why does he have any credibility anywhere if he lied in his article about something that demonstrable? Why would anybody, CNN or anybody else, take anything he, uh, he, else he says seriously? Why? Well, Corn has been a Washington reporter for a long time, and some people respect his work. Who? <laughs> Name one. <laughs> you can't. He is a hatchet man. You know he is. He's an apparatchnik from the far left. And all of this is driven. Stelter at CNN, you don't get more far left than this guy.
former New York Times guy. Google him in Fox News. Google him. Just r- over the years. Look, final word, Howard. Yep. These guys want to come after me. I'm here. Anybody who says my reporting in Argentina was erroneous, they can come on tomorrow night. I got calls into Dan Rather. I got calls into all the CBS brass at the time. I'm going to get the video. CBS, I think, is going to give it to us tomorrow so that people can see for themselves. They can see it. I want you, everybody to read the New York Times article by Meisel. It's up. All you right. can get it. Bill, I right? get to a break.